Welcome to my CCMP Switch course. I'm going to be doing the chapters out of the Switch Foundation book for exam 300-115. The first chapter is titled Fundamental Reviews. Part of our fundamental reviews are going to include a basic introduction of Switch technology, LAN devices, broadcast domains, Ethernet framing, switching functions, and that's it. Our main objectives are to identify LAN devices, hubs, switches, bridges, bridges, not bridges, describe a broadcast domain and collision domain, discuss basic switch functions such as VLANs, trunks, STP, and port channels. Uh, we'll understand what a multi-layer uh, switch does and how it functions. So without further ado, let's get into our LAN devices. Some of our common LAN devices are our hubs, bridges, and switches. A hub is a dumb device. It will take an input signal and clone the signal and pass it out all ports. They do not filter data so that all frames are sent on all ports. Bridges a bridge is a product that connects a LAN to another LAN that uses the same protocol. Uh, a dumbed down version of a router essentially. But with a bridge, it has to be the same protocol. Lastly, a switch. A switch, very similar to a hub, but unlike hubs, switches do error checking or have the ability to do error checking and can support both layer 2 and layer 3 functionality depending on the switch, but it also does better frame forwarding. What I mean by that is a hub blanketly broadcasts all uh, frames out all ports. A switch will only send the message out the appropriate interface unless it is a dedicated broadcast. So a switch is a smart hub or you could say that a hub is a dumb switch. There are some other uh, differences, but those are the major ones. Okay, so switches of today. We've moved past just forwarding frames. They can now route traffic. Again, that goes back to the layer 2 and layer 3 functionality of a switch. They can be part of a security design or VoIP deployment. So switches are taking on a multi-facet role now. They meet, the need, uh, they meet the needs of today's Cisco switches. They've evolved to include additional feature-rich uh, feature set of functions. Some of those supporting features are application intelligence, unified network services, non-salt communication, integrated services, operational management, VoIP deployment, security design um, switches today have just become a keystone within our networking and we're not going to be moving away from them. Let's move into our broadcast domains, our collision domains, and our MAC addresses. First thing to realize is a MAC address contains a 48-bit destination. And who is the frame for? Normally it's that layer 2 device and it's done in hexadecimal. There are six groups or six pairs normally separated by a hyphen or a colon. Remember each one of these is four bits so this is eight bits and eight bits and eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, and eight bits. Add them all up, 48 bits. For example, hey Joe, Joe could be uh, another PC and we're trying to find out the MAC address of that PC. A collision domain. A collision domain is where you have devices that will inter uh, interfere with one another when they've detected someone else is communicating. Essentially, if I'm talking and you're talking at the same time, our voices will cause a collision. And they're normally separated by hubs. On a switch, a collision domain is individual per port. 
or a switch. The network region in which uh, collisions are propagated is a collision domain. Normally repeaters and hubs will propagate a collision. Bridges and switches do not. So we can reduce our collision domains by using bridges, switches, and routers. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our broadcast domain. Our broadcast domain, similar concept, except they are separated by a layer two or a layer three device. Broadcast frames are a message to all devices on a LAN, and repeaters, hubs, bridges, all switches all propagate broadcasts. If you want to separate broadcast domains, layer three device, normally your router. A router will not forward a broadcast. So to reduce broadcasts, we're looking at layer three devices. There are Broadcasts are necessary for basic network functions. They do uh, do things for our layer two network. But trying to get to a, the layer three level, broadcasts really are not necessary. Some devices and protocols produce lots of broadcasts, so we need to be careful with them. Broadcasts can also be kept manageable by limiting our LAN size. Another benefit of virtual LANs. LANs can be cross-connected by routers to make a larger internetwork. Smaller LANs coupled together with a layer 3 device reduce broadcasts. So reminders. Collisions spread throughout a LAN segment. They spread across hubs and repeaters. They do not cross switches and bridges. Broadcasts spread throughout an entire LAN. They spread across hubs, switches, and bridges, bridges and are stopped only by a router. So let's look at our uh, Ethernet frames. An Ethernet frame, the beginning portion, we have our preamble, we have our start of our frame delimiter, we have our destination address and a source address, we have a length or type, we have data and pad, and a frame check sequence so here our data is going to be, this will include, the data will include our layer three packet and data. And this should consist of about 1400 bytes. Here's another uh, view of it. So preamble, it's just the trailer consisting of the bit sequence, serving the, the bit uh, synchronization of the receiver. Start, that's just pointing at the start. Destination and source address, that's pretty straightforward. Length, indicates the length of the sequential data field in bytes according to IEEE 802.3. That's Ethernet. Data and pad, again, that's going to be our user data. And pad to make sure... It's going to be the appropriate size, and we're going to end with our frame check sequencer to verify that the frame has no errors. Moving on, switch functions. One of the big things we've talked about have been MAC address tables, and we haven't really talked about CAM tables. So that CAM table is content addressable memory. And here's an example of it. It will give you what ports, what Ethernet frames are there, and what is on it. Is it a host or is it an uplink? That way it can uh, forward frames quick. VLAN tagging. VLAN tagging is used when a link needs to carry traffic. This is a link as a packet are received by the switch from any attached in uh, station or in device. A unique identifier is added to the header. Basically, let's say we want it, we're on PC1 and we send it to the switch. That switch should know that port is attached to VLAN 1. If it wants to go over to another switch, it's going to have to go through a trunk. 
but this will be stamped VLAN 1. So when it's received by this switch, it knows it can only communicate with other devices on VLAN 1. Switch or a VLAN 2, same thing will go to the switch, it'll be stamped VLAN 2. This dedicated link in between is known as a trunk link or a VLAN trunk. Here is another example. If uh, we did not do a trunk, we could do uh, one dedicated line so that from switch A to switch B, VLAN 1 would have one dedicated trunk line, VLAN 2 would have one dedicated trunk line, and that's no longer realistic. That is why we do VLAN tagging. We can do one end-to-end -end connection, and that will carry information for both VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. Some of the basic tagging, uh, 802.1Q, fast Ethernet framing, that's uh, the big one that we use nowadays. Cisco recommends 802.1Q. So in our header, we actually have the option, our source and destination MAC addresses, we added in one additional component to our frame. That was our VLAN tag. That would generate a new CRC. Yeah, ISL is an internet switch link. That's Cisco proprietary. And again, they don't want you to use that. You should be using the 802.1Q standard. Here's our 802.1Q. Here we're going to give it a protocol identifier, a TPID, and we're going to give it a tag control information. These two bytes are going to give it the appropriate VLAN. So, how uh, this is a big one, so this new frame the NIC card and networking devices can understand this is a baby giant frame, 1522 bytes. However, a Cisco switch must remove the encapsulation before it's sending the link out of an access link. So, going from a switch to a switch, it recognizes this is an appropriate frame, and so it's okay. But going from a switch to an access link, to an access port, this would not be allowed. It will strip out the header information for our frames, for our VLANing in the frame. All right, so let's look at our TPID and TCI a little more in depth now. Again, a TPID, uh, protocol ID, it's a fixed value of 0x8100. If this is uh, a specified uh, encapsulation type, then it will be tagged appropriately. The TCI is going to be a 3-bit uh, user priority, 8 priority levels, 0 through 7, 1-bit uh, chronicle, chronicle format, so that's all good, and it'll have 12 bits of VLAN information, hence the you can define up to 4096 VLAN types, 0 and 4,095 are reserved, but you have additional items within that list that you can work with. All right, more back into trunking. Here we have a trunk link. The trunks will go between our switches so that the frame will come in. It will be uh, tagged appropriately, 802.1Q frame uh, information, and it will be allowed because it's going to be going through trunks. It will get to switch Z, and then that trunk uh, information will be pulled off and sent out that access port. Conceptually, this is what a VLAN and trunk system looks like. Here we have rectangles, circles, and squares. The trunk is a combination of all of them. And then at the end point, they're going to filter out back to their original uh, shapes. So how do we configure a trunk? Switch port mode trunk. That's all we need to do on the switch side. 
if we are looking at interview and uh, connections, we have to do some things with layer three devices. But right now, switch port mode trunk sets uh, our trunks. If we are using uh, access links, it'll be switch port mode access and then the appropriate VLAN. But again, this is a switch course, so you should already be familiar with basic trunking information. Configuring our trunks, again, we have our different links. We should no longer be using this. We should be do using this. Access links for the VLANs and trunk ports between our switches. What about DPP, Dynamic Trunk Protocol? Again, this has already been brought up in your CCNA material. So you should already know the different modes and what they will end up on. Spanning tree protocol. This is always a good one. This is when uh, we have multiple connections. We can stop switching loops by using spanning tree. That way if we have multiple switches connected, we can prevent some of that. Port channels. Port channels, also known as ether channels, consist of individual or multiple connections that will mimic or act as one logical link. That way, we can increase bandwidth. Some miscellaneous things are architecture. Again, super important that you understand the three-tiered LAN design, core distribution and access, how they will represent in a diagram, you need to make sure that you understand the terminology for a layer 3 uh, interface uh, and what we call switch ports. Is it a switch port or is it a router port? What about a switched virtual interface or a bridged virtual interface? Those are terms that you're going to have to know. Things like uh, the different types of interfaces, are they allowed to do inner VLAN routing? Some of our separate technologies on how we would be distributing our core distribution and access, how that's going to be designed, how we implement switch, uh, switched virtual interfaces. Again, this is all information back from your CCNA. These will be switched virtual interfaces. These are internal interfaces, logical interfaces to allow for inner VLAN communication. Do not forget that a switch port is a layer 2 port. If you want to use it as a routed port, you have to tell it no switch port. That forces it to be a layer 3 port or a routed port. Ether channel is again multiple links between our devices, logically acting as one. And that's actually it for chapter 1. I wanted to thank you guys and hope you guys have a great day.